Hello, Steve. Okay. So I need to. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. You can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon to you. Uh, OK, thank you. Um, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our webinar on positive parenting this afternoon. And this webinar is hosted by the Central Region ACADA office. And we have a guest facilitator who will take us through the presentations, who is uh, Professor Peter Wanderi from Mount Kenya University. He's in charge of uh, corporate services at the university. Uh, but for us to agree on how to go about it before we start the presentation, I want maybe to give a highlight of uh, why we have found it important to run this webinar. And the first reason is that uh, issues of positive parenting or challenges of parenting are rampant and every one of us could attest to that, especially today with the challenges arising out of the COVID pandemic in the country since last year. We have had a lot of challenges, especially on issues of raising our children, and uh, all these have been seen in the entire community spectrum, including in our schools where we had a lot of unrest and other issues. The other issue is that we have found it important to do at the webinar because due to the restrictions of COVID gatherings, we would not be in a position to meet in person. Uh, the best forum, or one of the best ways to reach to you as a parent, and especially those who had expressed interest and uh, requested NACADA to run such a program. These webinars are running on a weekly basis based in the various regions. Last week, but one, we had one for Eastern region. Last week, we had one for Nairobi region. And today, we have one being hosted by the Central region. And also about our housekeeping is that we had requested that you send your questions in advance so that at the end of the presentations, we'll have an opportunity to respond to the questions. And I can confirm that by now we have already received 10 questions, which we are going to respond to as we come to the till end of the presentations. In case of an, an urgent question, you can drop it through the box, the inbox in the, in the, on, the, on, the, on the Zoom, and I'm sure we'll uh, respond to it at the end. And I think uh, without much ado, I want to invite and present to you uh, Professor Peter Wanderi from Mount Kenya University to start to us off in this program. Uh, maybe I didn't introduce myself. My name is Amos Warui, and I'm the regional manager, Central Region. And uh, we welcome you and we look forward to a very enlightening and informative presentation. Prof, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Amos. I hope I am clear. Amos? Yes, you are clear. Thank you very yeah, much. You are clear. I am here as a friend to NACADA, and I am the principal corporate services at Mount Kenya University, but my friendship to NACADA finds me here this afternoon. And I'm very happy to Amos and to Nakada for this invitation and for this opportunity because we need to exchange ideas, to exchange views as parents, not because any one of us is better than the other one, 
but because we need to continue assisting each other to improve on what we are doing. So in this case, I would wish to go to the introduction and say that I would start by explaining what is um, maybe next, move to the next slide. What is parenting? And we also look at the justification. Uh, Amos, you are controlling the slides. So kindly move to the next slide. Okay, Prof. Yes. A move slides banner. Listen to him. He's yes, running. please, please let him move slides. Thank you. And so we look at what is parenting as a definition and then a justification for attending this session. We'll also look at the parenting styles and their impact on children in relation to substance use. How we protect children from substance use and other mental health disorders. The four areas of focus in positive parenting. We also look at what, where we are headed back to school at the COVID-19 pandemic vital mental health considerations among children as schools reopen. Then we'll look eventually at parenting and substance use control, and we'll have a session on questions and answer. And by definition, the concept or the issue of parenting is defined as the raising of children and providing them with protection and care in order to ensure they are healthy, development into adulthood. We have three areas that are key, raising children, two, providing them with protection and care, and three, healthy development into adulthood. I am sure that is why most all of us, we are here as parents. But then why attend this session? What is the justification for this? Yes, you saw the, the, no, the information, but why did you have to come? We think and we are justified to believe that there is a naturally occurring need for lifelong education. When everybody, when everybody has the natural urge to continue learning something new every time. As they say, education begins from birth and ends at death. That is, it is start from cradle and adds at grave. So we are here because we need to gain knowledge since knowledge is power. And maybe I can also indicate that we change our behavior through our knowledge because knowledge leads to change in attitude and attitude leads to behavior ch uh, change. In this case, this applies to all of us, both parents, even our children and everybody in the community. Knowledge leads to change in attitude and attitude leads to change in behavior. And therefore, this is key to all of us. We also know that knowledge edifies, we grow as we learn. So Kalibuni, Kalibuni Sana, and I believe this is going to be a good session of learning and helping each other to learn. So we start by parenting styles and their impact on children. In other words, how can we as parents, how can our behavior put our children to risk, at risk of substance abuse? Here we are going to look at how parenting can be, and we know very well that parenting can be a very intensely rewarding experience, although it is extremely demanding and some of us come at it without any preparation. That's the reality. And therefore, parents have a role to nurture and keep children safe, healthy, and also help them to grow into independent and well-adjusted adults. As parents, we all aspire to bring up the best family, 
despite the numerous limitations and challenges encountered. Admittedly, we never had any formal training on positive parenthood. And so trial and error processes, these are common experiences here and there, and therefore there is need for this kind of a discussion. As we move on, we request that everybody let us reflect on our own parenting style as we go through the next few slides and try to see where we fall and see therefore how we can adjust if need be. This is on parent styles of parenting. The first one to be presented is authoritarian parents. These are dictatorial and they are domineering parents. They place strict and firm limits and controls on children. They use stern discipline and employ punishment to control children's behavior. They use power to control, to, they use power to control and order children allowing little verbal exchange. Rarely do they allow children the opportunity to be themselves. The issue of obedience is the mantra in the home. And the focus here is obedience, obedience, obedience. Impact. They tend to lose ability to influence their children, although through reasoned discussions or to help them develop good thinking skills. You know, thinking is a skill and these children may be denied the opportunity to develop thinking skills. We continue on authoritarian parents. Their children may become rebellious, aggressive, and dependent on their parents. The children may possess low self-esteem, may appear insecure, and exhibit more behavioral problems. They are less likely to develop internalized values that equip them to make wise decisions. Unfortunately, and this is now key, that these children are, have a very high, they have a very high chance of initiating substance use. That is authoritarian parent. The second style is the authoritative parent. And let us note the difference between authoritarian and authoritative. The authoritative parent is knowledgeable and reliable. These parents encourage children to be independent, but still limit and control their actions, that the children's actions. The authoritative parents support children to develop according to their maturity, that is to the children's maturity level. And they set behavior boundaries with the children. The authoritative parents place high maturity demands on their children through having open discussions, encouraging children to obey using reason. The focus here is setting clear expectations. And what will be the impact? The impact is children are encouraged to make decisions and learn from mistakes. What about children? The children here are happy they develop good self-esteem, interact well with the peers, and have better mental health. We'll be talking a lot about mental health to end the end of the presentation. These children from authoritative parents or who are supported by authoritative parents have a low chance of initiating substance use. The next Style is the permissive of all indulgent parents. They are highly involved in the life of their children, but they place few demands on the children. They set few rules and boundaries and are reluctant to enforce them. And they tolerate children's misbehavior. Children do whatever they want and always get, the, get their way. They believe their children are not yet mature. The focus is keeping their children happy and giving them freedom. The impact, 
is by setting no boundaries, they predispose their children to alcohol, substance intake, drug use at an early age. Children have little self-control, have a hard time following rules, and possess egocentric tendencies. They tend to love themselves and over and over, they want to think about themselves. These children, they high, have a high chance of initiating substance use. The fourth style of parenting is neglectful for all and involved the parent. This parent or the parents are mostly involved and involved in the child's life. They provide for basic needs such as shelter, but are uninvolved emotionally. Neither support nor control their child's behavior, and the child shows poor self-control, lack of independence. Some even reject children, and it is known of such parents who reject children even throwing away children. We know of such cases. Focus is provision of basic needs, if possible for them, but sometimes they can even skip that. Impact. Children raised in this environment learn to provide for themselves early and avoid being dependent on others. Unfortunately, these children exhibit antisocial behavior, delinquency in adolescence, and are at an, an increased risk of substance abuse and tend to be to manifest fear, anxiety, and stress. The fifth and last style is the overprotective parent. These parents see the world as a dangerous place, especially for their children. And they may express openly their fearfulness of the world to their children. They manifest the habit of trying to rescue their children from dealing with the harsh realities of life. They actually tend to operate like helicopters coming to remove children wherever they think it's unsafe. And they have the nickname of helicopter parents. The focus here is being the child's friend or allay and instead of using rules and consequences for bad behavior. Impact lack experience and may panic in stressful situations. Their children may be insecure and indecisive, and these children tend to have a high chance of initiating substance use. As a caring parent, what should I do? Let us remember that a parenting style may take may make the child be more or less vulnerable to behavior problems and in initiating substance use. That's just a reminder. Therefore, as parents, let us critically evaluate ourselves and try to avoid the extremes. We have seen in the five categories, there are two extremes. Let's try to, to avoid the extremes. Let us find a balanced approach to parenting in an important step that we can take to prevent our children from delinquency behavior, including substance use. And therefore, how can we protect children from substance use and other mental health disorders? When should we get concerned? What red flags can we look for? These are usually a combination of physical, psychological, social, and educational science as follows. And we'll dwell on this for some time because it is quite critical. One, changes in friends and all being secretive about friends. This is amongst, amongst children. Changes in behavior and attitude, becoming withdrawn, secretive, or unfocused a drop in school attendance, drop in marks and grades, or increased problems at school, as well as changes in eating habits, either eating too much or too little. In such situations, these children would usually 
they usually signal mental, these cases signal mental, they come as a, sign, a sign of mental illness, such as depression or drug use. But however, we are cautioned, we should not jump into conclusions. Let us reach out to these children and understand them. When we use positive parenting skills, we are able to prevent problems, detect them early if such problems arise, and try to have a way of resolving them. There are four areas that positive parenting would focus on. One is being responsive, where we connect with our children regularly through listening to them, trying to understand them by talking to each other and asking questions. Also, by being responsive, we will show interest in what is happening amongst our children and show concern for their well-being. We also find out, try to find out their views and their feelings and share our views too. The second of the four areas is to provide structure. We have to establish clear rules, communicate rules and consequences. The structure issue routines as much as possible is needed, which allows involvement in various activities, including the household, household, household issues and tasks and other family responsibilities. We should also establish rituals like eating together. That is good, but doesn't happen all the time. It's not possible all the time. So where possible, let it happen. And have family activities to enhance bonding, including prayers, but we'll come to that later. Discipline the child and show the reason why you are doing that. I remember once I disciplined when I, my children are grown up, but one time I was dis disciplining one and he told me whatever I was complaining about, I had never cautioned him that was wrong. And I felt very bad and I will never forget that. So we have to listen and make them understand. We give encouragement each time. Rules are followed well. Number three, we have to get involved. We need to monitor and supervise schoolwork and other activities like screen and media time because we have to be involved. Get to know our children's friends and friends parents. Also, we need to monitor the use of pocket money. This is critical because we have to reason together on the use of pocket money. Let our children not treat us as parents or guardians, as wallets. You know, you will go to your wallet whenever you wish, open it, pull out as much as you want, nobody will ever ask you. Let us help them not to treat us as wallets because if we are wallet to them, that would be dangerous. Let us encourage their interests also, all hobbies, art, music, cooking, everything, including lead, reading and correct them with affection where correction is required. Let's spend time with them regularly, if possible daily, if possible weekly, Sometimes we know this may not be possible, but let us go out of our way to ensure that we bond. But however, let us all strive to be role models to them on a situation of continuous improvement. I bet no one parent is 100% good. We are in a status of continuous improvement. We learn every day, and that is why we are here, to learn learn, learn, improve, and become better every day. And the fourth area is of positive parenting is it is good to let them know God. How to pray, have them love and fear God. Because we know the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Kindly let us create time to teach our children how to pray because we may do so much, but if we do not involve God, then 
there isn't much that we are doing. We are headed, very soon we'll be back to school at the COVID-19 pandemic. That is a reality. What will happen? What are the vital mental health considerations amongst our children as schools reopen that we need to discuss? First of all, parents have been blamed for increased cases of indiscipline in the schools. This is a big debate. Tolerating improper behavior in their children, treating their children like eggs instead of tough love. These are reports that are known and people discuss about them. But it's also expected that for our children as they go to school, we are aware that they need to play. So the question is, will there be physical activities? We are very sure that we may not be able to keep a child away from physical activities, but the regulation is no physical activities. How do we go about that? Social distancing, it is hard, but they have to be made to appreciate that there is something called social distancing. Use of masks, they have to be made to appreciate. Hand washing, all these are new norms and we must make our children to appreciate them and do what is required despite the challenges. If we open the discussion, it could continue up to evening and continue up to morning, but reality is there and we have to follow. Are the children ready for this? What are the fears of our children? How are they going to cope? How about ourselves as parents? And some of us are teachers. How ready are we? Let us talk about children and mental health with the reopening of schools. The discussion, we're only starting a discussion and it should continue. Mental health, as I mentioned earlier on, would want to dedicate a few minutes on this and agree and come to understand what this is and appreciate ways about it. This is a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his or her own potential. How one can cope with the normal stresses of life, how one can work productively and fruitfully, and one, how one is able to make contribution to he or her community. This is a definition given by the World Health Organization. And I will repeat that mental health is a state of well being in which every individual realizes his or her own potential, how one can cope with the normal stresses of life because stresses of life are there, you have to cope with them, how one can productively, can be productive and be fruitful in life, and how one can make contribution to her or his community, because again, this is very important. As we continue this discussion, towards the end of it, we will see there is a need to get ourselves involved with what is happening, uh, in what is happening within the community, and we need to offer our contribution. And that is why we are here also. Why should we be concerned as a community? Half of the mental health conditions start by the age of 14 years. And, but most cases are undetected and untreated. Depression is one of the leading causes of illness and disability amongst adolescents. Suicide is the third leading cause of death amongst 15 to 19 year old persons. This is, these are statistics from World Health Organization. So in this case, we cannot take issues of mental health for granted. But what are the early warning signs of mental health challenges? And I wanted to say that this is not for children only. It is also for us parents and members within the community. Let us look for this. Whenever, every time we see this, let us use it as a sign and trying to see if we can get help. Experiencing one or more of the following feelings or behaviors can be an early warning sign of a problem. And as I've said, it's, all this could be applicable to us as parents, could be applicable to us 
not only as parents, but even to our friends in the community and elsewhere. So we need this information. When one is found to be eating or sleeping too much or too little, is that condition of insomnia, sleeplessness, pulling away from people or usual activities, having low or no energy, feeling numb or like nothing matters, having unexplained itches and pains. The other day, a colleague of mine told me, mentioned of Hapa na Hapa syndrome, that you go to the doctor, but you're not very sure what is wrong, but you have a problem. This is the problem that you're talking about. Feeling helpless or hopeless, feeling unusually confused, forgetful, on edge, angry, upset, worried, or scared, yelling or fighting with family and friends, experiencing severe mood swings that cause problems in relationships, having persistent thoughts and memories that one can't get out of, you can't get them off your hand and your thinking, hearing voices or believing things that are not in things that are not true, thinking of harming self, yourself or even harming others, inability to perform daily tasks like taking care of children, getting to work or getting to school for children, increased behavioral problems at school for children, tendencies towards initiating habits such as smoking, drinking, or drugs abuse. However, let us not panic. Let us not jump quickly into conclusions. Let us reach out to each other, find out what is happening, and make very good decisions. Early warnings, signs of mental health challenges, vital tips. When we use positive parenting skills, we are able to prevent problems, detect them early in case they occur, and resolve them easier. We will be available and do not be too quick to dismiss or remove distractions, make it a habit to communicate to know what is going on. Communicate, communicate, communicate to each other. Remember our four areas that of positive parenting, which could focus on being responsive, providing structures, being involved, and obviously prayers and sharing the word of God. This will help us as we move on, especially on these issues of mental health challenges. We have a lot of blame games within the community, but what is the way out? We are aware that parents expect the school to address all challenges or issues, all challenging issues regarding our children. Parents also tend to blame bad behavior on the ban of corporal punishment in schools and also other issues at schools. Teachers blame parents for abdicating the, abdicating the roles in child really. The Ministry of Education blames parents for poor parenting, but are we listening to our children? Parents have a role to nurture and keep children safe and healthy while also keeping them grow, helping them grow into independent and well-adjusted young adults. Teachers have a role to impact knowledge and skills in a conducive environment with the support of parents. And therefore we are saying without the support of parents, we will have a lot of problems. So in this case, what is the way forward? What is our role as parents in prevention of alcohol and drug use? Why would the child, why would a child take drugs? There are many factors. Influence from other people, popular media issues, we know that, escapism, and self-medication, tendencies to end being liberious, issues where they say they are bored and they remember it is said an empty container is a divorce workshop. 
So when children cannot tolerate idleness or being alone, they crave for excitement. So let's engage them. Instant gratification where drugs and alcohol tend to work quickly and they are shortcuts to happiness. And this comes through peers. Lack of confidence, children who are shy can do things at the influence of drugs. And therefore, I know and uh, parents are aware and teachers also would be aware that situations arise when children or even the youth would tend to get into substance use when maybe they are going to do a performance because they say we get confidence in doing what we are doing. This is something that we need to help them in, to get out of it. It is all about misinformation, where inaccurate information is dangerous, but can be avoided. What should we do if we suspect our children have started using alcohol or other substances? First, let us gather evidence to be used so that we are sure of what we are going to do. We should expect some anger and we must resolve to be calm as we deal with the situation. Expect some denial or a lot of it. Offer empathy and compassion. We have this helpline number, which parents we may not be aware, of, but now we are getting to know about it. Helpline 1192 and we get a chance to speak to a counselor. We could also visit the youth center at Kenyatta National Hospital, specifically for 12 to 25 years, but we also have private counselors within the community who can come very, become very useful to us. We also ask, should ask questions, but let us strive to find out the child's views about alcohol and other drugs and talk about what they would do in different situations. Do we talk about this? And as I talk about this, I ask myself, do we nurture this discussion? Parenting and substance use control, what should you do if you suspect your child has started using drugs? Let us make it clear that we disapprove of alcohol, tobacco, and drug use for children. And this should be clear. Since the teens are extremely concerned about their physical appearance, let us remind them about the negative effect of alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs on physical appearance. We should remember the need for continuous improvement. We also need to be models, and we may not be the best, but there is that need to be better every day that comes and goes. Once we pay attention, we will notice some tendencies of, of, of substance use among the children, even at an early stage. And what if the child already has alcohol or drug problem? Accept addiction as a family disease or seek professional help. Be available understanding and provide a warm environment and support to one's recovery. Again, we have access to the helpline number 1192, where we can speak to a counselor. We could visit the youth center at Kenyatta National Hospital, especially as we had mentioned earlier on. We also need to attend as family the therapies that are available. Above it all, now as I finish, this I think is a very key presentation I'm making, that most children are vulnerable but are not yet using substances, but they are vulnerable. So one, let us take active steps to start this conversation. We start, we discuss everywhere, let's discuss amongst parents, with our children, at various forums where we are. Let us consider to join available community-driven initiatives. And for these initiatives, 
we know before we come to the end, maybe let's let me finish. Let's keep to the last slide, please. On these initiatives, we know the community is every day waking up to the reality of drugs challenge within the community and different persons are coming together to offer support. Let us join hands. Let us move on and be part of the game. But let us also remember that NACADA team is ever available. And as I finish the issue of being role models to our children, I would want to narrate a case of a person I know because as parents, we have all the time been challenged that how are you performing as a role model to your children? I know of one father whose children today are in their twenties. And this father up to today, the children do not know that like many of other parents and fathers, when he goes out on an entertainment, he would have one beer or two for the road. For the road, nobody in the family knows. It's good not being secretive, but there is no need of letting your children know whatever you are doing. Let's be discreet and let us, as much as possible, keep it to ourselves. And as I finish, I wish to thank everyone for your audience and we are ready to receive comment. But what I've said and I've indicated, we have a lot of activities coming up within the communities. Let us embrace them. Let us join them for the good of our community. I submit and thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, I think uh, the presentation went on very well. You're on time. We had planned to do about 40 minutes. And uh, I'm sure, like we can see from the comments bar, we have learned a lot. Now, I think as I said, we'll move to the next session where we are going to look at the questions we have received. And I would propose that we first look at, uh, let's go to the questions which had been emailed earlier when people registered. And I would start with the one from Alphonse who is asking about uh, NACADA services. And he's asking, is NACADA serving all Kenyans? And I would like to respond in affirmative that yes, NACADA, we are serving all Kenyans because to start off NACADA is a government uh, organization. We are parastato under the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government. And we serve Kenyans through our region offices. NACADA, we are all over the country. We have uh, region offices for coast region, Nyanza in Kisumu. We have another office in Western for Kakamega, based in Kakamega for Western region. We have other office in North Rift, that is in Eldoret. Our South Rift region office is in Akuru. And we also have another one in Embu for Eastern region. Northeastern region, we have an office in Garissa, and for Central region, we are based here in Nyeri. For more details regarding our offices, including the contacts, you will find them on our website, so that in case you need to engage us further at your regional level, you will be in a position to reach us. The other question was um, why we are not in each and every county, and I would say that this is something Akada is very much concerned about and the board is working towards that, but uh, progressively we are opening up more offices, but due to challenges of resources, these are progressive, it's work in progress. Uh, the other question was from Caro, and Caro is asking, how do I talk to my teenage son about sex and girls topic? And uh, going or picking from the lessons we have picked, uh, we, we have learned from the various types of parents, Caro, you can see that uh, we have types of parents who do not engage with their children and others would engage and would recommend to start by building rapport with your son to facilitate trust upon which you will engage him and try to make him, you understand what he knows about sex and girls. And from there, you'll pick out the myths or the misinformation he may be having. And based on whatever you learn or you pick from him, you'll have an opportunity to clarify, uh, to make him understand what he needs to know about this. 
it's also important to make understand him understand the value of sex and respect for one's body, including dangers of premarital sex and uh, sexually transmitted diseases. Thereafter, keep the conversation going by talking to him, listening to him quite often, and that way you'll be in a position to continue helping him to get to know more about these topics, including drugs. The point here is that we need to listen to our children. We need to give them opportunity to express their fear, their worries, and the misinformation upon which we'll be in a better position to guide them. We also had another question from Janet. Janet was asking whether there'll be a certificate after the training. And unfortunately for us, this is a sensitization. Like and you can see, it's just a 45 one hour, one hour presentation. And the idea here is just to equip the parents with the skills we require to make sure that we are helpful and we are good parents to our children. Normally for trainings where we issue certificates, it takes about three days. And those are usually structured trainings. And still, when you go to our website, you'll see the list of the trainings we have scheduled. And you can always register for one if you're interested in acquiring a certificate. We have other questions which have been posted on our board. Um, we have talked about this. Uh, Frederick Ruby was asking, how can one protect children from bad company groups? Remember we said, as a parent, you need to know the friends of your children. You need to know whom they relate with. You even need to know their parents' friends so that this way you will be in a position to guide them the kind of friends to keep and the friends who are not helpful to him. Then uh, Harrison Kirui Kipkembo is asking a uh, prof to repeat on the issue of pocket money given to children. I think there's a point where you're talking that some parents, uh, they, they don't care uh, what happens in their children. They provide everything. I don't know, prof, whether you want to mention something about that. Uh, yes, Prof, I you can think, hear me. Yes, I do. I do. I do. I, I can hear you. And it is just a matter. Just, but let me. And I'll continue saying that none of us is perfect. None of us is that. You know, the very good model that we could think about. It's a matter of improving and learning each day at a time. But now here we are saying, what is the issue between ourselves and? our money and our children. What, how do we relate myself, my money and my children? So this is, at, I think, a three point level where I suppose, and this is what the message we are getting, let, I not, let us not allow the children to, be, to make us a wallet. You know, as I mentioned, you go to your wallet and the wallet do not ask questions. You remove everything, wallet will allow you. You remove little, so entertain a discussion. Sometimes I could even confess that um, there could be a debate. How much of this discussion is enough? Because you can again be extreme in the discussion, but we've said that moderate aspect is enough, is good enough, where you do not need to be. Let's not try to be too mean again to our children, in the excuse of not being a wallet, but somewhere in between. And, and the discussion cannot end here, Amos, and I was saying that we have community-based initiatives that are coming up every day, which are meant to help parents. And I am, um, if, if, if I could say that even at the university level, at Mount Kenya University, we are exploring possibilities of coming up with such a forum. And once we get it, it is all meant for the good of the community. And the discussion thank you. continues, yes. Thank you, thank you, Prof, for that clarification. And I think the point to take home here is that uh, we need to make our children account for whatever true resources we give them. Because if we are not careful, they might end up using those resources in terms of money to buy these products and uh, substances. Then um, there's another one from Vincent Mambo. He's asking, uh, he's noting that of late there has been increased cases of murder among lovers. Can such be explained as an effect of parenting styles? I would say yes and no. 
depending with how you look at it, because there are so many other factors which look at cause this. Remember, I talked about the issues of mental health, because normally when somebody is doing such acts, you are not in your normal mental state of mind. So there are so many other factors, including the COVID, the stress. A lot of people have lost their jobs. There are so many stress levels have gone up and uh, they're having so many challenges. So that, yeah, it could be among many other factors. Uh, then uh, Vincent is also asking to what extent does taking children to boarding school uh, contribute to, I'm losing you, uh, sorry. Yes, I think it, he was asking about, yeah, taking children to boarding school at a very young age affect positive parenting. I'm not an expert in this. I don't know whether Susan is, uh, Susan can hear me. Susan, you can comment on this? Susan Maua? Uh, hi, I've actually, I've actually commented. I've actually commented that. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. It's taking, taking a child to school, especially when they are uh, still very young, affects bonding. You know, on a day-to-day -day basis, it, it actually uh, drifts the parent with the child uh, too far away. So it means that a child who, you know, is still young should really not be taken to boarding school. We have situations where parents take children to boarding school at class one, seriously. That, that is, is even a violation for, uh, for that child's right. Yeah, so... When they are older, then um, it, it makes more sense to actually uh, help them. But in addition to that, there is also the aspect of preparing this child uh, to go to, to such kind of environments. And also, what kind of connections are you going to have? You know, there are parents, as the presenter mentioned, who, you, you know, you even dump the child in school. Yeah? Sometimes we take them to boarding school so that we don't take care of them. It's, it's like they have become a burden. And children also learn mm -hmm. over time. And sometimes if you listen to even children in boarding school, you know, they even know, um, you know, my parent, it's a visiting day, but as a parent, you don't even get there in good time. Yeah, It starts from two to four, and you are known as a parent that you are a late comer. So you're going to get there when it is half an hour to the end. And I've had children actually talk. I said, ah, I don't need to bother looking at the gate. My parents, they, my parents don't get here on time. And sure enough, a few minutes to the end, that is when you hop in. That's already sure. the uh, neglect on the part of the child that eventually you actually drift apart. Yeah. But, you know, having uh, visits and also when they, they come back home, you know, spend more time. But again, we see that when they are home, we are looking for tuition and, you know, something that keeps drifting them away from us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Susan, for that clarification and the, other, and the other answers you have provided on the Q&A box. And now I want to also invite uh, our counselor, Catherine Kimui, to take up some questions on issues of treatment and rehabilitation. Catherine, over to you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, we had a question from Jane. Jane has given us. Raise her voice. She's a little too low. Yeah, your volume. Increase your volume and your voice. Okay. We had a, two, a question from Jane. Jane had given us two scenarios of relapse cases. The first one was about a young man, 24 years, who had been to a rehabilitation center twice, in 2017 and in 2019. And every time he keeps on relapsing and goes back to smoking weed. Currently, he's already addicted to weed after he relapsed in December 2020. And Jane says, please note his admission to the rehab uh, was involuntary. The second scenario, it's about a 27-year-old young man 
who went to a rehab, but upon discharge, he relapsed after a month. So Jane wanted to know causes of relapse. By relapse, we are referring to recurrence of any disease that had already gone into recovery. We are referring to going back to active drug use after a period of abstinence. Uh, there are various causes of relapse. Uh, they could be personal, they could be uh, social, they could be environmental. In uh, about personal issues, Maybe during rehabilitation, the person was not honest with the program. Maybe they failed to disclose to the counselor all the issues that had affected the person before use and during use, and maybe those issues were not addressed. It could be maybe the person has co-occurring mental disorders that were not recognized or addressed during rehabilitation and that's why it's good since addiction is a brain disease, it's good first to take a person for psychiatric evaluation and assessment before maybe taking the person to a rehab. The other issue maybe could be fail failure to recognize negative emotional states such as anxiety, depression, boredom, anger, frustration, guilty, <coughs> And shame. If a person fails to recognize those states and maybe not seek for help from their counselor, it could be a recipe for relapse. Maybe the other one, the person is unable to control their thoughts, especially if they constantly think of the pleasure they used to derive from substance use. So it's good once a person is discharged to from a rehabilitation center to keep in touch with their counselors and address all the emerging issues. Also inadequate skills to deal with interpersonal conflicts and lack of problem solving capacities can also lead to relapse. Inadequate skills to deal with social pressure, low self-esteem or lack of self-efficacy if a person doesn't believe they have what it takes to do a task, it could lead to relapse. Also poor physical health, maybe the person is taking the, if the physical health issues were not addressed during rehabilitation, the person could be taking medication to manage pain. Also about behaviors, maybe the person, that, uh, maybe the, the, the desire to test personal control of alcohol or drug use. Some people after a certain period of abstinence, they like to maybe to test themselves whether they can be able to control their behaviors by maybe going where the substance is being consumed and that can lead to relapse. Lack of basic such as food, clothes, shelter can lead to helplessness and lack of sense of meaning and purpose in life, taking the person back to drug use. The others could be lack of social support from family members, from peers, or from communities they live in. Maybe if they don't have intimate relationships, whereby they are able to discuss personal, personal issues without being judged, such a person can go back to drug use. Maybe poor family and kinship relationships, or lack of willingness by significant others to, part to participate in rehabilitation. From pure peers, if they lack access to recovery-based abstinence fellowships, such as Alcoholic Anonymous or Narcotic Anonymous, it can also lead to relapse. Also, lack of community support, whereby communities don't address uh, issues of stigma the person might maybe go in solitary confinement where they don't to discuss their issues and that could also lead to relapse. Lack of recovery role models at community level who will be able to guide them. Lack of connections maybe to institutions such as schools. If the person was a student 
workplace, even places of worship, or even community or tribal organizations whereby maybe they are not even given roles. Then we also don't have many recovery community support institutions such as recovery centers and clubhouses that are found maybe in the Western countries. Environmental issues also, although rehabilitation is supposed to equip a person with substance use disorders, skills to give the person skills and knowledge to resist temptation when they go back to the environment. Sometimes the environment can be a high risk situation which pose a threat to the individual sense of control and increase the risk of potential relapse. And we are talking about people. They are people they should stop associating with, especially those who are actively using substances. We are also talking of places. There are places they should avoid going to, especially where the places where drugs are being used. Also events such as special occasions and celebrations where substances are being consumed should be avoided, especially during the initial stages of recovery. Again, maybe it could also be the issue of the rehabilitation facility. Maybe the facility lacked a safe and a conducive environment for recovery. It could also be maybe there were unqualified personnel. Maybe the program uh, uh, at, in the rehab didn't holistic, holistically address the biological, the psychological, the sociological, and spiritual issues that affected the two gentlemen we are talking about. Uh, and, but these causes of Catherine. We are losing you. Hello, Catherine, can you hear me? Hello, Catherine. Looks like we've lost her. Yeah, I can't, yes, uh, I'm trying to reach her. Yeah, I'm seeing some other persons raised the uh, hands, maybe you can pick one or two, Amos. Yeah, yeah, you can pick one from Zabrum. Hello? Hello? Sorry. Hello, Catherine. We are looking for Catherine and Lawrence had carried up his hand, although now it's down again. He put it down. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Geoffrey is there. Geoffrey? He's muted. Maybe he's not aware. <laughs> yeah. He's raising, but he's, I think he's muted. Yeah, he's muted. 
Uh, I think we are losing Catherine. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, Geoffrey. Please go yeah. on. Yes, thank you very much for the good presentation pro from Professor and uh, also the contributions from the discussants. Uh, we are really uh, getting a lot of uh, insightful information. So may, uh, I wanted some, maybe uh, uh, to pick some of your thoughts about um, this crop of uh, children who have just completed uh, high school. You see all along they have been um, in, a, in a very controlled environment that has a routine and uh, in, engage, engagement with the teachers almost uh, back to back but now they are joining the home environment uh, without uh, that, the kind of structure that they have been uh, used to at school. So how do you, uh, what are your thoughts about uh, really how these children can be engaged meaningfully so that they don't slip into drug and substance abuse? Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey, for your good question. I want to invite our director, Madam Yvonne, to take it up. Madam Yvonne, are you there? Thank you, Amos. Uh, thank you, Lawrence, for that uh, question. Uh, for this uh, student, if I may say, charity begins at home. And I think uh, Professor was very clear on our responsibilities because at the end of the day, it is what have we brought from home for these children to be able to work with. Children are going to be with us now for some time and uh, parents knew that, we planned for that. So we should also be having plans in the sense that at this time, the KCSC has just concluded today. So how will I engage my child? The community at large has different activities and we also know there is this uh, repression because of the COVID. It is the parents who work with the children to be able to attend to this. Again, it had been mentioned before, maybe you could uh, check our website. It has different pamphlets, different booklets for parents to talk to their children. Also, Churches have different activities, and this is also where volunteer work comes into play. Parents just have to come in and assist their children. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam uh, Yvonne. Um, I can see we have uh, answered most of the questions on the Q&A board, and our time is uh, <laughs> catching up with us. I don't know whether there's anyone with a very burning question from the participants before we conclude our presentation for the day. I can see Frederick. Frederick, please bring up your question. Yes. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, Rick? Yes, yes, I'm very grateful for a great session. I've learned a lot and I'm very grateful. Maybe my, my, my concern is that uh, when will we have another session? And number two, how can we help our young ladies and uh, men uh, accept the results, especially after the release of KCPE last week and maybe coming uh, in the future KCSE? Thank you so much, Mungo Bariki san. Thank you, thank you, Frederick. Uh, two questions. I will answer the first one, then Professor will answer the second one on how to accept the outcome of the results. Uh, these uh, webinar seminars are ongoing. Next week we'll have another one and we are sharing the timings on our social media platforms. That's on our Facebook and Twitter and you can always find us and follow us at Nakada Kenya and you'll be learning more of even other future events. So Prof, I request you now to respond on how to make our kids accept the results, because I think that's a challenge most parents are facing. Thank you. And before I do that, let me go back to the issue of discussions. And like the question was asked, uh, how often shall this be availed? 
I suppose there could be a possibility of either doing the way, because nowadays this is the way to go, you could always find some opportunities here and there. The most critical thing is that the people who would want to offer support are not sure whether there will be people who are interested. And now that we are seeing this kind of interest, I, I, would, I am one person who would be following up on NACADA to help us as a, a community to get such a forum where we could continue discussing various issues that are very critical to us as parents, as youth also, because we have youth amongst us who need discussions and also as a community in general. Regarding the issue of the examinations, to parents, let us remember, this is an examination. We tried to help our children prepare. The examination was done and the results are out. Whatever the results we get, however good, however, however they are, we have to accept it. But let us also remember that this is not the end of life in itself. We still have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to help our children. The results will be good, fine. If they are not good, that is not the end in itself. There are many options of helping our children move on with, our, with their lives and even our par as, as parents to get involved in helping them be what they want to be. I'm saying this because sometimes we get very sad results here and there, you know, that a parent has done this to the child or the child has done this to himself or herself. I think we need to encourage each other that this is only a result, but not the end of life. We can make it in life, even with the results the way they are. This kind of Thinking is very important. It is very important. We need to encourage each other and encourage our children, but also as parents, let's not put a lot of pressure to our children and make them feel that they have not achieved. They have achieved. And that examination, the way it is, needs to be appreciated. And then we move on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof, for that uh, good answer. And parents, like we have been uh, taken through, we need to be in contact with that children. We need to keep on talking to them, being responsive and encouraging them in their phases of life, including bad results. Like Prof is saying, that's not the end of the world. There are so many things you can do with those results and we need to encourage and show them the big picture so that they don't feel uh, like it is the end of the world and they might end up getting into uh, substance use and other bad behaviors. And I think uh, members in the interest of time, I'm requesting that we come to the end of our presentation and our webinar here. But as we conclude, I want to invite our director, public education and rehabilitation, advocacy and rehabilitation, Madam Yvonne, uh, to make some remarks as she also thanks Prof on our behalf for having graciously agreed to be our, our guest uh, our presenter for today's session. Welcome, Madam Yvonne. Thank you so much, uh, Buanawa Roy. Uh, first off is to thank all the participants for joining us today and actually staying with us from the beginning to now, and uh, particularly for your active participation. Your questions are very insightful. They help us to even come up with better webinars in future. To you, Professor Wanderi, it is indeed an honor for Professor to take his time off to honor NACADA invites. We do not take it for granted. You're saying thank you very much. And hopefully the next time we invite you, you shall be able to come again. And we're looking forward to working even more together with you and even within your university. Thank you. To the staff of NACADA, thank you so much, Prof. The staff of NACADA, thank you for also joining. For those who are joining us live from YouTube and Facebook, we appreciate so much for your presence. Next week on Friday the 30th, we shall be having another webinar on positive parenting, touching on a different aspect of parenting. Join us when we will be with the North Rift region. Asante sana and have a good evening. Thank you. Back to you, Aroy. 
Thank you very much, Madam Director. And now uh, we're also very grateful to our participants. And unfortunately, I also want to apologize that our slots could not accommodate everyone. I saw within the first five minutes of our webinar, we had already hit our 100 mark. And I hope our IT will work towards expanding so that next time we have as many as possible. At this point, I want to invite anyone among us who is willing and ready to close for us with a word of prayer so that we can uh, uh, finish our presentation. Anyone? Especially our participants. Masi Njogu. Masi, I can see Masi was the first one and I welcome you to close for us with a word of prayer. Masi there. She had uh, raised her heart first and I thought, uh, Muted. Masi. Anyone? Masi, you can hear yes. me. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Please let us close for us with a word of let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We glorify your holy name. You are a wonderful God. Thank you for being with us from morning to this moment. Thank you for also making it possible to be in this meeting. Thank you for us as parents and even participants and even the facilitators, Jehovah King of Glory, and even well wishes of the Nakanda Jehovah King of Glory. Thank you because we have learned a lot about positive parenting. May you instill us good morals on Jehovah King of Glory that our children may also learn from us so that we may be the best role models to them, O King of Glory. Thank you, Jehovah King of Glory, for everything that you have done, for we have learned a lot, O God Almighty. May you also empower our children with the good morals so that as they live, even when we are with them and even without them, O God Almighty, when they are alone, Jehovah King of Glory, they may follow the rules and regulations always given by the parents, O God Almighty. We give thanks unto thee, knowing that you will guide us and guide them in everything. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, believe, and trust. Amen. 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 And thank you, everyone. And uh, we invite you to join us once again on Friday uh, in the webinar, as it has been advised. We also advise you and uh, invite you to visit our website, where we have a lot of information, a lot of EIC materials, and also to make use of our 1192 toll-free number, where we have uh, online counselors who can help you in some of the issues we are sharing here. Let's continue the debate. And let's also share among our social circles, among our parents and uh, ourselves as parents, our friends, and even our children. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you.